Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, privileged to welcome so many people here this evening. We did start uh, today at 2 o'clock and uh, got a fair chunk of our council business completed this evening. And uh, how we're going to proceed uh, in the next little while is we're going to start with uh, two special presentations today to, to cover. And uh, right after that, uh, we will get into our deputations for this evening and then right at the conclusion of our deputations we will start our public meeting to deal with our two applications tonight. Just a reminder, if you do have a cell phone in your presence, if you could just make sure it's um, turned down real low or silence it, uh, that would be very much appreciated so it doesn't interrupt our proceedings. Thank you for that. Yes, if I could have Candy Webb come forward and our county manager, Mr. Cribbs, and myself, and we'll do our first presentation now. Thirty-five years is a spectacular record of public service, and that's what more than, that's what Candy Webb has accomplished here. I'd like to start off by mentioning that she has some family present. Beloved husband Dave, who's holding a little one. Uh, son Jonathan, daughter-in-law Stacy, grandson Mac, I think they're not present at the moment. Uh, Sarah, uh, Pablo, and Ava. Yes. All right. So... 35 years, and of course, we here in Norfolk, are, or this organization, 17 years old, so uh, she actually started with Haldeman Norfolk, as, as we then were. Uh, and I got to tell you, I'm the new guy, and sometimes I'm, I'm naive, and I saw that her first job was field worker, and I thought, we used to have, like, tobacco fields. I think, like, that's fantastic. And I couldn't picture candy picking tobacco to save my life. Anyway, that's just the ignorance of the new guy. That was actually what we now call social services. Um, field worker to job developer, moving over to HR where very clearly she found her passion and what she excelled at. The jobs in order were acting manager, organizational development, advisor, labor relations, manager, labor relations, acting commissioner, human resources, general manager, human resources and staff development, and now, as she currently is, general manager, employee and business services. What does all that mean? What has she accomplished? That the single most difficult, it, and really, if you don't do sort of HR or labor or law, it's hard to understand how difficult it would have been to have overseen the amalgamation of 10 unions, 10 collective agreements into one. And while she has a really impressive list of accomplishments, overseeing that process in the creation of this modern entity that's allowed us to offer valued public services in a fairly efficient man manner is got to be the crowning accomplishment. It's incredible. There are only a couple of dozen people in Ontario who will have ever been involved in something from a labor perspective that complex. There are only a couple of amalgamations and very few have ever, you know, I look at Chatham-Kent, um, a whole bunch still to this day bear the scars of forced amalgamations or de-amalgamations. And we actually kind of got it. And from the staffing and the organizational perspective, that was absolutely key. I mean, that alone deserves, quite frankly, a standing ovation. You're gonna get some applause in just a second. At any rate, uh, Candy's a woman of many talents. I've come to appreciate them in my short time here. I've got to say, uh, it's not just validation from the boss. From the outside world, she's heading on to very green pastures, going to be the executive director of OMRA, which is the Ontario Municipal Human Resource Association. 
There are 444 municipalities in Ontario, about 300 of them are members of that. It's the association that collects everyone who does labour, employment, HR together, and uh, she's now going to run that show and was chosen by them because of her extraordinary skill, knowledge and accomplishment in this area. So she's got a future developing her profession and going to help people all over the province. And that seems to be exactly uh, par for the course and to fit into what I've seen thus far of her character and her nature. So all I have to say uh, before I turn over to the mayor is congratulations and thank you for your service. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cribs, and uh, what a privilege uh, for me to be part of this presentation to you, Candy. And Sarah, I want to say it's good to see you again, and say hi to Jonathan for me, please. You look terrific. David, I uh, am married to a lady that spent a number of years in the business world uh, as a, um, a department head in HR, and I understand why they sleep at night and talk at the same time. I, I absolutely understand, uh, yes, uh, why they do that. Um, when you are in HR, you are virtually involved with all departments of an organization and get to work with people very closely on very key issues. Candy, I don't want to add too much. I do want to say to you all the best on behalf of this council. You are going to very much be missed. This is kind of bittersweet for me because I have um, worked with Candy, as many of you have here for a long time, and uh, we have always held you in very high uh, respect for the work you do and the way that you professionally handle yourself, the fact that you are a true team player, in my opinion. Candy is one of the hardest working individuals and most dedicated worker that I can honestly say I've ever worked with, and uh, I thank you for that and wish you all the best in the future. So I have something here from Council for you that I'd like to present, this Certificate of Appreciation. This is for Candy Webb. And I would say on behalf of the Council of the Corporation of Norfolk County, I extend sincere congratulations to you on your retirement from Norfolk County. Candy, your service and dedication over these years, they are recognized and applauded by all of us. Council extends its thanks and its wishes, and we hope that the future, whatever your endeavor will be uh, in your retirement, will be going very well for you. And this is signed by Mr. Gazelle and myself, and uh, we wish you, all of us, the very best. Thank you very much, and, and uh, thank you, Mayor Luke and, and David, for those very kind words. I can truly say that it has been an absolute privilege to work with the staff and the councils of Norfolk County for 16 and a half years and before that uh, the staff and councils of the regional municipality of Haldeman Norfolk for 18 years. And you know I think Mr. Cribbs was right on the money when he said probably one of the highlights of my career was having the honour of being able to take a lead role in the transition from the two-tier municipal system to the single-tier Norfolk County and Haldeman County because the transition board was responsible for both of those new entities. And going into Norfolk County, we knew as a, as a senior leadership team and as council that we wanted to be progressive, that we wanted to make Norfolk County be the absolute best organization that it could be. In 2005, I recall that staff did some research in, in terms of what would that look like? What does it mean to be progressive? What does it mean to be strategic? Staff actually conducted some of its own uh, empirical research as well. And what we discovered at that time that in order to be strategic and progressive and to provide the best services that you can to the residents of your municipality, it was very important, imperative to be a learning organization. Staff in approximately 2006 took a report to council about the importance of being a learning organization. We mentioned to, st to council that not challenging the status quo is not an option. Staff have to challenge the status quo. The residents of Norfolk County expect and deserve the very best services that they can receive. 
And in order to get there, staff have to have the tools to be able to be strategic, to think outside of the box. They have to know about evidence-based practices, best practices. They have to learn how to be efficient and to be effective. And I, I think staff and all members of council here agree that we all have that same common goal. And in approximately 2005, 2006, Council adopted that we should have a learning organization. And in fact, the Council of the Day put that in our strategic plan. Unfortunately, over the course of the last year or so, we've seen some changes to the initiatives that we've been able to provide to staff. One of our key initiatives was partnering with the Mohawk College in the Future Ready Leadership Program. Another part of our strategic plan is that we want to recruit and retain the youth of our municipality. We want them to stay in Norfolk County and they want, we want them to find fulfilling employment in the county and perhaps with the, the Corporation of Norfolk County as well. Part of the, the Future Ready Leadership Team uh, program teaches participants how to, how to work in teams, how to be strategic and so on. Unfortunately, we've been able to, to provide, uh, uh, sorry, have less participants in that program over the course of the last year. One of the other changes we found with, with budget restraints is that we have a payroll branch of our, of our human resources uh, and staff development branch of human resources that provides payroll to 1,000 employees, volunteer firefighters, members of council. Unfortunately, during the course of this last year, one of those payroll staff members came forward and asked for some additional courses so they could work towards their payroll certification. Unfortunately, because of the budget cuts, we were not able to grant um, that request. In my mind, that was actually quite a shame, given the magnitude of the job of that individual. The Ontario Municipal Social Services Association Symposium held a conference earlier this year, and some of the key components were health services integration and community collaboration. Again, very important uh, in terms of staff and, and the vision of council. Unfortunately, we were not able to send uh, staff to that program as well. So as your general manager of employee and business services, I have what I believe to be my final request. I've got another month uh, that I'm working, but I believe this will be my last request to you as members of council. When you enter into your 2018 budget deliberations, please remember the council of the mid-2000s and when they bought into the learning organization philosophy. In my mind, as your GM of Employee and Business Services, it's not optional. As I indicated, the, the taxpayers deserve and expect the best service possible. And if we don't give our staff the tools to be efficient and effective, then we are not doing our jobs. And in closing, I'd just like to say to staff, to council, to members of the media, and members of the public, thanks for the memories. Thorns? There we go. 
Okay, yeah, I have to put that straight. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Again, Candy, on behalf of Council, thank you so much for all your hard work. One more presentation. It seems to be ladies' night out tonight. I would like to ask Jean Montgomery, and uh, we have a guest with us today, Ian Devine. He is from a Molson Canadian, and if you would come up, we'll get on with our second presentation. Not shy. This lady needs no introduction. This is Jean Montgomery. And as uh, Andy has made in the notes, he said, We are here to recognize a true gem in our community, Jean Montgomery. Tonight, Molson Canadian is awarding Jean with. Uh, an award that is being bestowed upon only 150 Canadians this year. The event is to recognize not only the county's sesquicentennial, but the individuals that make this country a great place to live. Now many of you know Jean from the hardwood courts where she mentors youth through coaching, convening, uh, and refereeing basketball. And uh, I can tell you her accomplishments go far beyond the basketball court. I think this week you're conducting a basketball school every day? Yeah. Oh, you're in better shape than me, I'll tell you. So is most people. Um, and I can t contest to a summary of her resume and many of these things that she's been involved with now and over the past 30 years in the county, uh, I can attest that I have bumped into her personally. And she's a very, a very humble lady. She doesn't like recognition. But I can tell you, this is some impressive amount of volunteer work you have done over your, your life. She has been critical in advancing the issues of mental health and suicide awareness in this community. Jean has been a board member of the Caring Cubber, Community Addictions and Mental Health Services of Haldeman, Norfolk. She's been a board member of the Norfolk Housing Corporation and also the Brant Norfolk Haldeman Legal Clinic. Jean has served upon many, many school council boards and numbers, numerous committees. She traveled to work every day with the Habitat of Humanity projects she has served as president of the Children's Aid Society of Haldeman, Norfolk. She is a past chair and volunteer with the Waterford Pumpkin Festival and many community daycare projects. I could go on and on about her great work and contributions, but we do have a nine o'clock curfew this evening. I'm very pleased uh, to be part of this presentation to you that Ian's going to do. Uh, on behalf of Molson and certainly on behalf of the citizens of Norfolk County, Gene. I want to just finish before I turn it over to Ian and just steal a little bit of his thunder. Um, Gene is being awarded this presentation for her leadership in her community. And it is the type of individual that Jean is and many, many others in this county. It is this strength of character that has redefined what we represent today and makes this country stand apart from all the others. Okay, I'll turn it over to you, Ian, and welcome to Norfolk County, sir. Thank you. Um, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to be here today to honor one of the many people within this community who have demonstrated great Canadian character. Molson Canadian looks at those who stand for great Canadian character to include connection with our community, breaking down borders and bringing people together, 
class, and holding ourselves to the highest standard in everything we do. Celebration, living through joy de vivre and celebrating the best of life. Commitment, through the determination to go to extra lengths even when it seems impossible. Contribution, by leaving things better than when we found them. During Canada's 150th birthday year, Molson Coors, Canada's oldest brewery, reflects upon the words of our founder, John Molson, who stated that we are all members of a larger community, which depends on everyone playing a part. Molson Canadian has created a commemorative wooden crate uh, to award to Canadians amongst us who have demonstrated great Canadian character. We are delighted to recognize Jean Montgomery for her years of dedicated service to making a difference in the community of Norfolk County. Further to this specifically designed crate being received by 1,500 Canadians coast to coast, there are also 150 iconic Molson Canadian red fridges. Those red fridges are being awarded to just 150 Canadians for exhibiting great Canadian character in their community. Jean is receiving one of these fridges tonight. We recognize Jean as one of those examples of hashtag a, a taste of who we are. Mayor Luke, will you please join me to make the presentation to Jean for all of her efforts here in Norfolk County. I must say, this is a surprise and it is a true honor. The Lord has blessed me and I feel it is a privilege to be able to volunteer and I'm very humbled by this award. And I must say, I was at basketball camp this afternoon and I was texting one of our special guests that was going to come and Aaron Gotro uh, said, oh, I see a fridge in your future. And I said, what the heck is this about? And I didn't know. Now I know. And I've never had a fridge with my name on it before. <laughs> Anyways, I would like to thank everyone involved here. And you know, we are all in this together. Norfolk County is a wonderful place. And there's many, many people who volunteer and do so much behind the scenes that we don't know about. But we're all together making a great place to live. And I truly thank you all. Thanks. I, just one more thing I should say, and I'm very sorry, Ian, but I don't drink beer, but if I did, it would be Molson's. Okay. <laughs>
get this whole thing off. Where are you going? Ian, it is warranted the way he's handling that. I'm hoping it's warranted. Thank you, Andrew. Ian, again, thank you very much. Ian, on behalf of Council, thank you very much for all your work on uh, this presentation and coming here this evening. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, you got your housework done there, Andrew, and we'll proceed. Thank you. Let's go to our deputations uh, next. I'm going to find my sheet and where are we? I want number 10. Where am I? Uh, here we are. We have two deputations this evening. The first one is from Stuart McKenzie and Bernie Salomar. And their deputation is on roadside mowing practice. And gentlemen, come to the microphone, and uh, if you push the button on the right that says talk, we'll get you uh, ready to go. Stuart, you have uh, 10 minutes, and I'll let you know around the nine minute mark that you have a minute left. Thank you, sir. Uh, I assume I can just prompt Andy to scroll through the slides, or do I have a clicker? Thanks. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council and the public, thank you very much for allowing us to speak today. Um, this may seem like small potatoes, but I do want to extend a, a thanks to Candy for the segue. Um, this is all about um, creating an, an informed um, organization uh, and to challenge the status quo, and all I'm talking about today is the status quo. Um, so we're going to provide you with some recommendations for a more sustainable roadside mowing. My name is Stu McKenzie, and this is Bernie Solomar. Uh, I'm a citizen of Norfolk for 15 years. I'm a, a young citizen that immigrated to Norfolk County, so I am who you're trying to attract. Uh, and Bernie's representing the Norfolk Field Naturalists, and I don't know how long you've been here. 25. So uh, Norfolk County has provided very recently a lot of recent progressive action uh, in the name of sustainable development. So uh, for some examples are Phragmites, Phragmites control and along roadsides and drains, the Causeway Improvement Project, the Port Rowan Wetland and Municipal Drain, Lynn Valley and Waterford Trails, participation in ALICE, um, and the opportunity I'm going to show you today, which is roadside corridors for pollinators and wildlife. So the justification for most of the cutting that we see along Norfolk County roadways are driver safety, road shoulder maintenance, and agricultural weed control. And if we go through these examples, um, we can quickly see there's some pros and cons to each and when and when where not, they're relevant. So for cutting for driver safety along intersections, it's very justifiable where you need to see left or right, but there's absolutely no benefit to driver safety along straight throughways where there is already a wide shoulder, often six to 10 feet, and then roadside cutting takes it another six to 10 feet. You can't really see it in the, in the pictures there, but uh, I'm happy to share them at any other time. Uh, let's talk about the duration of this cutting benefit. In many locations, after two to three weeks after the mowing, there's very little difference in the vegetation height. So the mowing actually provides no benefit for driver safety in a lot of locations. Uh, and the regrowth that does happen is primarily undesirable species, most often invasives um, and weeds, as opposed to more native vegetation and grasses that were there to begin with. Road shoulder maintenance. Um, we may need to keep on mowing in some instances on roads where there is no shoulder, so the mowing creates the shoulder, but there are more uh, permanent and less harmful sh solutions that can be done. Uh, and the bottom left picture is actually a picture from Elgin County where they do not do roadside mowing on some rural roads and uh, the traffic just uh, was quite happy. Alternatives to mowed shoulders include grading uh, or raking at appropriate times of year. Uh, you can just not cut them or paving, and paving is becoming much more popular, uh, particularly for increased alternative uses like bicycles and walking. And with respect to agricultural weed control, there's much greater sources of weeds on, than roadsides, so fallow fields and all of the natural areas in Norfolk. Cutting at the end of the growing season will have the same impact to control weeds. Uh, there's prolific herbicide use throughout the county to combat weeds um, that aren't necessarily always coming from roadsides. And establishing roadways as pollinator corridors could actually help agriculture. 
So the justification for review and modification of cutting practices. Well, the primary one uh, that's bugged me for a while is cost savings and waste reduction. Now, we're only talking about a county budget of about 120 k a year. Um, and, uh, but much of that could be saved or redirected. I was actually surprised that that's all it costs. Um, carbon footprint, um, which is counter to Canada's commitment to climate change, and I'll speak a little bit more on that. Uh, the mowing itself creates a safety hazard. There are large wildlife impacts. And this is an opportunity for Norfolk to transform its roadways into natural and cultural corridors. And they can also have a positive impact on tourism by aesthetically pleasing scenery near roadways. So cost savings uh, through prioritization and planning. Here's just one example of uh, sort of wasteful mowing throughout the county. At Long Point, the red lines indicate where mowing occurred. And there's more than eight kilometers of unmowed travel to mow uh, less than one kilometer of actual cutting in certain areas. Um, this is a picture of St. Williams Road, and the sign I've circled is road not maintained, enter at own risk. So there's roads all over the county. In the case of St. Williams, Walsingham Forest, and Bacchus, three of the most biologically diverse areas in Canada, and the roadways are mowed twice a year. The roads are not maintained, and it's enter at own risk, but the, the mowers go down them twice a year. Carbon footprint, there's 1,900 kilometers of rural road. Let's say we cut maybe 1,000 of them. The budget works out to approximately $1,000 a kilometer to cut. There's two sides of the roadway. There's driving to and from each of those sites. Um, let's say the tractor's moving at 10 kilometers an hour. That's about 400 hours of driving. Let's say a tractor on average uses six liters of diesel per hour. That's 2,400 liters of diesel at 2.68 kilograms of CO2 per liter. We're looking at six and a half tons of carbon dioxide uh, for the status quo of a lot of counties, the county's roadways. Whereas tall grass prairie and grasslands will sequester 0.5 to close to two tons of CO2 per acre. Uh, and the safety hazard, uh, the slow moving machinery of tractors uh, in the county's busiest road periods um, is probably equal to or far greater than the risk um, of long grass on roadsides for, for drivers in the county. There's large impacts to wildlife, a lot of injury and mortality for all taxa, ink, for snakes, birds, small mammals, and particularly insects. Um, this large injury and mortality undermines county's other investments in wildlife conservation, the Causeway Improvement Project, for instance. A lot of these impacts can be mitigated by modifying the timing and frequency and location of cutting and avoiding cutting period from May through August, uh, except for in those sort of target areas. By increasing cutting, you're also increasing landscape fragmentation, and there's lots of evidence that increased fragmentation increases the number of ticks and rates of Lyme disease in a number of studies. Uh, and then you're also reducing the number of grassland and pollinator habitats. Another benefit is the creation of these natural and cultural corridors. There's going to be short and long-term term savings, potentially hundreds of kilometers of, uh, of new green space, not just in Norfolk, but this sort of is a practice that needs to be changed across the hemisphere. These savings could be redirected into small-scale pilot projects or long-term planning um, to uh, sort of beautify the county, and this in turn could increase tourism and the economic diversification. And it's yet another example of how Norfolk could showcase its progressive leadership in natural capital. So in conclusion, a review and modification of the county's roadside mowing practices could provide savings and many benefits to the constituents of Norfolk. Norfolk County's natural heritage is a major driver of economic growth, including tourism and diversification. It's the reason our economy is growing and we're so powerful at the moment. And it's, as I just stated, another opportunity to be a world leader in sustainable development practices. And why not make it Ontario's wild garden as well? Uh, I'll entertain any questions. I have some documents here. There's plenty of literature in sort of in the world of sort of roadside mitigations and creating corridors for pollinators. And I'll pass that to the councillors and I have some for staff and the public if they're, if they're interested as well. And uh, I forgot stuff, but that's okay. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Stuart. Uh, very well done. And uh, certainly I'll open it to questions. Questions from council members? Councillor Columbus, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Stuart. Thank you for coming forward. Uh, one of the things that we notice and that people often comment on is the fact that our farmers in the area do a nice job of cutting along the roads in front of their properties. Are you suggesting that that be eliminated and uh, let the tall grasses grow? Uh, no, uh, private landowners can do what they wish with their, with their roadsides and the county nor I can presume to tell them what to do with it. But there are lots of spaces that uh, we don't have that, um, that 
public participation in road maintenance and there's lots of areas where the county could just take action on on their prop on their property so, to speak. so you, you don't mind farmers cutting their lawns right to the gravel shoulder then? well it's not ideal i've got a vendetta against grass cutting in general but i'm not going to pick of that fight okay thank you thank you further questions I hear none. Uh, Bernie, if you wish to speak, I'll let you. Yes? I, I just, I came mainly as eye candy, but um, if I could just say that Norfolk County, and I've been here 25 years, I've been involved with a lot of the organizations in the area that have to do with conservation and stewardship. Um, we are well known for that. Um, we do have practice, uh, you know, uh, things like Alice going on. Um, the Biosphere Reserve here, the Provincial Parks, the St. Williams Conservation Reserve, Bacchus Woods and the other NCC properties. Um, we have a reputation for being green. Um, and we ha also have a reputation for having a lot of biologists and naturalists, good quality people. Um, Stu and I are both biologists. We're here um, because we, we're here being constructive. We're not looking at criticizing. Um, but we think there's some changes that could be made that would benefit everybody in this county. And, uh, and we're available, not just, not just Stu and I, but many of the other biologists in the area are available to work together with, uh, with staff, if that's the direction that we should go, including pilot projects, um, I th which I think is the first thing, and uh, communication with the public, because without a, a, a communication plan, these things will go awry. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Bernie. I appreciate those comments. Any other questions for these two gentlemen? Thank you very much. You can be seated, gentlemen. I uh, will need a seconder for the information uh, uh, resolution moved by Columbus, seconded by Wells, that the deputation of Stuart McKenzie and Bernie Solomar respecting the roadside cutting policy review be received as information, discussion. If not, those in favor? That's carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, you will see next that we have a motion before us from uh, from Councillor Black, and he has moved it. I will need a seconder uh, to his motion to get it on the floor for discussion. Councillor Height, Mr. Clerk, you have a better voice than I do. Would you read uh, the motion from Black and Height, please? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Whereas countywide roadside mowing of approximately 1,900 kilometers is an avoidable burden on taxpayers of Norfolk County, creates a safety hazard on roadways during peak travel time and visitor times, increases the county carbon footprint counter to any effort to curtail climate change and kills or wounds wildlife and damages their habitats. And whereas these species include amphibians and reptiles that the Long Point Causeway Improvement Committee and citizens of Norfolk County seek to protect and Norfolk County has thoughtfully spent taxpayer dollars to protect on the Long Point Causeway. And whereas our species, including birds, small mammals, monarch butterflies, and other insects, including some at risk species, and their food plants and habitats are being negatively impacted by mowing of roadsides throughout Norfolk County during and after these cuts. Therefore, be it resolved that Norfolk County staff review Council's roadside mowing policy, including researching more sustainable roadside maintenance policies in other jurisdictions, and develop a policy that is more fiscally and environmentally responsible in regards to limiting or no mowing, except for situations where motorists, pedestrians, and cyclists are subject to greater risk, i.e. road corners. First, Further, that a revised policy be provided to Council for review and adoption prior to the beginning of the second 2017 roadside cut. Thank you very much. It's now open for discussion. Councillor Black, I'll let you start, please. Well, Mayor Luke, thank you very much. And uh, certainly I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Stuart and, and Bernie for coming forward. Uh, really. I think Stuart, with some of his photos of uh, Long Point Causeway and some of the, the effects of uh, turtles and roadside mowing, kind of brought this to a head. That's what uh, prompted me to put the motion together uh, with their assistance. Uh, you can see, um, because uh, they're, they're here to help us and, and not, uh, not, not pick fights. And even as demonstrated, the 
Councillor Columbus tried to pick a fight with them and they just, they wouldn't bite. So they're, they're here to help us and not work against us. And that is demonstrated, and thank you for that, Councillor Columbus, I appreciate that. Um, it, it's, um, I've questioned this procedure for many years. Um, I know that there has been various rationales, and I understand that, and um, I accept that. But I do think that there is a better way that we could do, perform this activity. And the motion outlines that, that it's not... Uh, it's not a motion to say no roadside mowing, it's a motion to say uh, can we look at uh, a better way of doing it, improving it for the environment. Some places we can mow, some places we won't mow. And uh, it's asking staff to come back with a report. So it's not saying, you know, do this, do that. It's asking for their advice and uh, uh, any other advice that they can get from uh, uh, surrounding municipalities or from the field nat naturalists or from Bird Studies Canada or from the Biosphere Organization or the Causeway Group. There's many groups out there that would, would have expertise or e even our own environmental uh, NEAC committee could be of assistance. Um, I have included a date in there and maybe I should through you ask staff if that date, if this does pass, if it would uh, be an appropriate date or if they, they think that maybe, you know, they could do it in a shorter period of time, which I doubt, or they need a longer period of time. So could I ask that question? Lee, do you have uh, any comment on a time frame? Um, through the Mayor to Council, the information that you've requested is quite extensive in here. Um, we do our fall cutting um, after October 15th, usually right around then, uh, we actually watch the monarch butterflies to make sure that they've mostly crossed the lake before we start that program. I'm concerned that this might be a little bit tight to get it back because we do have a contractor already engaged for the fall okay. roadside cutting. We would need to notify them substantially in advance in order to not have any financial penalties with respect to that contract, et cetera. Um, we can cert certainly something we can work on. We can certainly bring it back in the fall but it may not be able to be before the roadside cutting starts for the fall. Well, I accept that, and uh, that's why I asked, so maybe I'd like to change the motion. Your fifth and final paragraph maybe could say yeah. in preparation for 2018 cutting. That sounds good. Thank you. That I don't mean good. to put words in your mouth, but I think that's only fair because yes. with summer, summer break, October's not far away, and this contract, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, so at the beginning of the uh, 2018 roadside cut, if that's so okay. Thank, thank you, Mayor thank Luke. Thank you, sir. And uh, those, those are my comments. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? The motion then will read the last paragraph further that a revised policy be provided to Council for their review and adoption prior to the beginning of the 2018 roadside cut. Any further discussion on Councillor Black's motion? If not, those in favour? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Black. Bernie Stewart, thank you. That takes us to our uh, last deputation. That deputation will be from uh, Mr. O.S. O. Wilson. He wants to come forward. I know what you're here to talk about, I just can't find it, but I know it's the Eva Brook Donnelly Museum, and I want to point out that you have 10 minutes, Wes. Good to see you, by the way. I've seen you in a while. <laughs> and uh, um, I'll let you know at nine minutes that you're about a minute away that you can sort of wrap up if you're at that point. And I also want to indicate that resolutions number five and six, which were motions uh, from last week's uh, Council of uh, Committee of Council. They uh, were set aside earlier this evening and they will be dealt with immediately after your deputation and they pertain of course obviously to resolution four last week on the uh, direction given to staff on the Eva Brook Donnelly Museum. Thank you. The floor is yours. Hello everyone. I'd like to thank Mayor Luke and Council for allowing me to speak today and all the public who uh, came out to this Council session regarding Eva Brook Don, the Museum and Archives. I'd like to take a moment to explain my background to Council. My family has deep roots here. 
as I am loyalist descent from Richard Mead, one of the first settlers of Port Dover, and son Benjamin Mead was the captain of the Port Dover militia. My family has a rich history in the commercial fishing and agricultural industries. My grandfather, an immigrant from Switzerland, who worked from the old green shanty just across from the Harbour Museum. On the Wilson side, based on Silver Hill, thought by many locals to be Wilsonville, from my family being the owners of the same property for over 150 years where they cultivated tobacco and are currently raising cattle. I grew up in Norfolk, first in Turkey Point, and just, then just outside of Walsh. For three years, from 2013 to 2015, I was the miller of the backhouse grist mill. After that, I was, and still am, involved with the Norfolk County Heritage and Culture Department, where I did a co-op at WAM, aided with the ongoing revitalization of the Teeterville Pioneer Museum, took part in the Canada 150 Committee. I've been involved with the Norfolk County Heritage Committee, where I recently co-authored the designation report on the Quant Sawmill. Currently, I'm working at Canada's first Forestry Station Interpretive Centre and going through for Architectural Conservation Engineering at Carleton University, which entails the preservation and restoration of historic structures, like Eva Brooke Donnelly Museum. During a period when Canada looks back and celebrates the past 150 years, it is quite ironic that some council members place little regard for a historic and heritage focal point in the county seat. On July 4th, there were many people awaiting in anticipation of council's decision as to the future of the longest operating museum in Norfolk County, giving way to all other heritage institutions. When the people of Norfolk learned of council's decision, to not accept the recommended option, option four, presented by the manager of heritage and culture, we were stunned, plain and simple. Instead, council decided to close the museum, only keeping the archives open. Leaving the museum closed to the public, programming would stop and artifacts would be deaccessioned and sent to other museums. Upon learning of this, I thought to myself, we need to do something. The people of Norfolk County need to do something to show Council that we care about Eva Brooke Donnelly Museum and Archives, that we as a collective society want this magnificent site to stay operational as a central archive for Norfolk County and operate as a museum as recommended via option four. That would display the history, heritage, and diversity as stated in the Norfolk County coat of arms on the wall behind Mayor Luke. And boy, do I have something to tell you. All the people of Norfolk County care about Eva Brooke Donnelly Museum and Archives, that is for certain. When we began calling around to different organizations in Norfolk, every single one agreed to write a letter of support uh, for Eva Brooke in option four. Currently, there are 26 different organizations from across Norfolk who have agreed to write letters. A few of these organizations are the Multicultural Heritage Association, the Halls of Delhi, multiple of the Women's Institute branches, the Port Rowan South Walsingham Heritage Association, the Waterford and Townsend Historical Society, and the Norview Lodge. Some very notable ones are the Grand River United Empire Loyalists Association, the Ontario Historical Society, the National Trust of Canada, and the Architectural Conservancy of Ontario. Then we made a petition with over 706 people having signed the petition thus far. When you go through the people who signed the petition, you can see that these people are from across the county. I would like to take a moment to share with you some of the comments people left on this petition for reasons as to why they signed. Lori Timpson, I grew up in Simcoe and the museum is a huge part of the local history. My grandfather, James Dixon, was the governor of the jail and his keys, medals and memorabilia are part of the museum. Future generations will miss out on the heritage and culture of Norfolk County. Diane Clark. I am an elementary teacher in Senko, and every year countless students from my class and school have visited the museum and Donnelly home to become immersed in the rich history of Senko and Norfolk and to better understand life in a different time period. Please see the importance in keeping this museum open and keeping the invaluable artifacts in their current location. Local access to history is important for all. Bob Moore. I'm signing because my family has donated articles to the Eva Brooke Donnelly Museum and we expect them to always be accessible to us there. William Ramp. This museum serves as a core function for its community to inform its present in light of its past. In a community that lacks that function, forces of economic and political self-interest and destruction, often misnamed development or progress, can operate as if they are context-free. Brad Rawlings. The museum building itself was given to Norfolk County by Eva Brooke Donnelly for the purpose of housing the collection of the Norfolk Historical Society and operating 
a museum in the county town of Norfolk. Do not pass up the opportunity to preserve this wealth of historical artifacts and records. This is our collective history. Future generations will look at our current council and wonder what they could possibly be thinking in not doing the right thing in maintaining this museum. Joanne Papadopoulos, this is part of me. It's part of my home. It's our history. As you can see by the comments made by these individuals on the petition, they are very passionate about Eva Brooke. We as a collective society care about Eva Brooke Dawn, the museum and archives. On the topic of the museum and artifacts, the collection housed in Eva Brooke Donnelly is the most significant collection in all of Norfolk County, which was expressed in great detail by Melissa Culver on July 4th, and more recently by Jim Cruz, PhD, and the Simca Reformer, who was the former director of the ROM. The collection gives the intangible heritage of Norfolk a tangible aspect. When you are able to put them together, it means so much more which is done and has been done by Eva Brunk through the artifacts donated by the people of Norfolk County. These items were donated to the Historical Society so that they could show the heritage of Norfolk. However, to deaccession the collection is not, I repeat, not possible. The reason being because the process involved in deaccessioning goes as follows. First, you have to contact the donor or member of the immediate family to see if they would like the object returned to them. Then the next step is to contact local museums to see if they would like the items as part of their collection. Now the collection at Eva Brook Down the Museum numbers over 20,000 artifacts. And to go through this process for every single item would take years to do and thousands of man hours. The Donnelly home donated to Norfolk County by Eva Brook Donnelly is a designated building under the Ontario Heritage Act and is to be preserved by Norfolk County. There is fear by the people of Norfolk that if council does not alter their decision in closing the museum, the building will fall into disrepair. This building is an architectural gem in the heart of Simcoe, with a key aspect of its preservation of the building being its continued use through operating it as a museum. Concerns have been expressed by the Architectural Conservancy of Ontario and the National Trust of Canada regarding the preservation of the structure. The educational programs at Eva Brook are a vital aspect to the site. Many schools frequent the museum to educate their students about the heritage of the community. People have expressed that the only time they learned anything regarding history was when they went to Eva Brook on school trips. <laughs> to remove this resource, you're removing the ability of teachers to provide the tangible heritage and the future of generations, ability to learn, creating generations of ignorance. The site provides the learning experience necessary to grow from the past mistakes and successes. We learn how our civilization came about and of the hardships, struggles, challenges, and achievements of Norfolk. Rather than seeking ways to embrace and promote our heritage, it would seem that some councillors are less interested in establishing pride in one's past and more concerned with the bottom line. Such short-sightedness strips away a compelling reason to stay in Norfolk for young people like myself and a motivating reason to attract others to possibly relocate to Norfolk County. An investment in preserving heritage makes a statement of determination for future generations, saying, we care enough to protect our past, establishes a clear cultural identity and set of values, ingrained in our coat of arms. There are other ways to generate revenue for the site through grants once operational, some being This Place Matters, Museum Assistance Program, Canada History Fund, Community Infrastructure Fund, and the Documentary History Heritage Communities Program. Everbrook would be able to access two separate grant streams, museums and archives, allowing more grant money to be brought into the site. However, to access these grants, the site needs to first be opened in the recommended fashion through option four and operated by professional staff. In the words of Scott Gillies, it's sad to think that a place which has provided so much information, so many answers to questions, so much joy for family historians, so much help and guidance to professional researchers and authors over the past seven decades may now be facing its own death. Are we writing its obituary or will it be resuscitated? Thank you. Thank you very much, Wes. Uh, you just got in under the under the 10 minutes very well done uh, i'm certainly going to ask if there's questions to you questions from members of council there are none if you want to be seated again we thank you for your deputation thank you
been moved by Columbus and seconded by Height that the deputation of Mr. Wesley Wilson respecting the Eva Brook Donnelly Museum and Archives be received as information. Discussion on this motion to receive? If not, those in favor? It's carried. I have a resolution in front of me. I have a mover, Councillor Black. I don't have a seconder, but I will read it, and then I'll ask for a seconder, and then I'll... I'm going to, I'm going to uh, let you speak. Mayor Luke, I'm not sure what you have in hand, and uh, maybe it might be a little bit uh, unusual, my request, but uh, the, the request of the deputation and the people that uh, have signed the petition is that we look at option four again, and I'm not sure if the if there's any councillor that uh, voted against it has changed their mind. If they have, I'd certainly like to present them the opportunity uh, to present that motion that was defeated last week. If that's not the case, I would like to move to the the next motion. Is is that permissible? What what you're asking. I'm asking if there is a councillor that voted against it last week that has changed their mind. Are you saying that the motion that was passed last week was Defeated, to one. defeat this, or are you asking if there's a councillor who has voted in favour of defeating the motion to change their mind? If, if one that voted against it... That's right. Yeah. One that voted against... Yeah, has changed their mind... Um, to give them the opportunity to say so and put that motion back on the floor. What are you thinking here? I know what he wants. I just want to be procedurally correct. Uh, I know it's, it's a little correct. bit odd. Uh, I was going to say you're a little unusual, but no, your request is a little unusual. I'm just kidding. Um, that's why we have this gentleman <laughs> is to uh, deal with procedures so that I don't get in trouble. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I think uh, the, the easiest way to do it is if somebody um, has changed their mind and would like to move the motion uh, that was defeated, then we could consider that. And if not, if somebody doesn't uh, put their hand up right now, we'll just move on to Councillor Black's motion. Yeah, that's all I'm asking. Is there a member of council who last week voted in favor of a resolution De defeated. five and six, which is option yep. four? You better word this yeah. because it's if, really if there, if, there's two. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. If there's somebody who uh, voted uh, against uh, option four, and thank you. That's it, a better and way. Has, has had a change of mind. Uh, Councillor Black is offering you an opportunity to move it now. So there That's were four it. four members last week that voted against option four. The fifth one is absent this evening. Any one of the four wish to to change their mind is what you're being asked, Councillor Wells. Go ahead. Could I ask a question? What would be the purpose of that? The person who changed their mind to get it on the floor. I presume Councillor Black is going to put a motion on the floor anyway. Uh, the, the reason, His motion on the floor is different from the motion from the last reason, week. It's slightly different. So I guess if he's got a different motion here and he wishes, because I don't have a seconder for this, he really has no motion. He is just... I'm just asking and requesting and... The reason I'm asking is because